This is Algebra 2, Chapter 10, Section 5, in which we will study recursion and iteration. A recursive sequence, which is where recursion comes from, is recursive sequence, is one where the next term is defined or determined by one or more previous terms. Okay? Arithmetic sequences are recursive because you have to multiply, or uh, add, I'm sorry, for arithmetic, you have to add something to the previous term to get to the next one. Geometric sequences are also recursive because you have to multiply by something to get to the next term. Now we can have two different kinds of formulas here. We could have an explicit formula where all you need to know is which term it is in line and you can figure out the value for it. That's what we've been using. A recursive formula defines it based on previous terms. So you're used to working with an explicit formula. All I have to do is know whatever value n, n is 9 let's say, and I can plug that in and get an answer. Boom, just like that and I'm, and I'm done. When it's a recursive formula, if I wanted to figure out the ninth term, first I would have to know the eighth term. Well, if I wanted the eighth term, then I would have to know the seventh. And then I would need to know the sixth. I would have to go all the way back to the beginning and work my way forward. So that's the difference between the two kinds of formulas. So we're going to do one here where we find the terms of a sequence based on a recursive formula. The sequence is starting at a1 equals 8. Each term, the next term as it were, is negative 3 times the previous plus 6, assuming n is greater than or equal to 1 so that we're not trying to find the negative fourth term or something like that. Well, we know the first term is a1. The next term, when n equals 1, so that we get the second term, it'll be negative 3 times a1 plus 6. Well, we know what a1 is. And then a little bit of arithmetic, and we get what a2 is. Okay. Now we know a2. To find a2, or to use a2 to find a3, we need n equal to 2. Plug in the value of a2 now. Do a little arithmetic. Now we know a3. If n is 3, we can find a4. a4 would be negative 3 times a3 plus 6. Well, we know what a3 is. So now we have a4. If we use n equals 4, then we can find a5. Plug in what we know. Do a little arithmetic. Now we have the first five terms of this sequence. Okay. Notice it's not arithmetic. Notice it's not geometric. That doesn't mean it's not still a sequence. It just doesn't fit one of those criteria. This would just be a recursive sequence. Okay. When we're looking at an arithmetic sequence, we can write ourselves a recursive formula. All we have to do to go from one term to the next is add d. If it's geometric, instead of adding, we're multiplying by r. In either case, we also need to state a1 so that we can then find where we're going. And that's part of the deal when it is arithmetic or when it is geometric, is you need to give me what a1 is. So let's look at this guy and see if we can figure out what we're looking at. Going from 8 to 20, 
would be add 12. But if I add 12, I don't get that. If I multiply to get from 8 to 20, 20 divided by 8 is 2.5. Well, 20 times 2.5 is 50. 50 times 2.5 is this. Hey, we're in business. We now know what R is because it's the same R going forward. Knowing that it's R tells me it's geometric. So I can plug R into the geometric recursive formula. And I can say what A1 is because it's the first term in the list. Okay. Let's try this one over here. 8 goes to 17. Well, that adds 9. 17 minus 8 is 9. 26 minus 17 is 9. That gives me a good clue that D is 9. It's arithmetic. That means I'm going to use the arithmetic recursion formula. Plugging the D in there that I know. And starting from the starting point again. So writing those isn't that bad once you identify what you're looking at, whether it's arithmetic or geometric. Okay. Now we're going to be doing this in word problem type form too. Okay. They want us to write a recursion formula to figure out how much money you owe if you started with $10,000 of debt, you borrowed $10,000 to buy a tank of gas at the rate things are going these days, and they charge you 2.5% interest, and you have to make a $600 a month payment, and then they want us to find the first five balances after you start making your payments. Well, See if this makes sense to you. The new balance, the new amount of money you owe, will be the previous amount plus the amount of interest that's charged minus how much payment you make. And if I know where I was, I add the amount of interest and I subtract how much I paid, that'll tell me where I'm at now. Okay? That's how credit card companies do it. They take where you were, they add interest, and they subtract your payment. Well, that as a recursion, recursive formula looks like this. The new balance, the one after this one, notice the plus one, is equal to the previous amount, which was AN, plus the interest, 2.5% is 0 0.025, times AN, you're paying 2.5%, times the amount that you had, minus $600, because you paid $600, you don't owe that. And your first term is, is $10,000. That's our recursion formula. Now let's go to work and find how much we owe. When N is 1, that's going to get us A2. A1 is $10,000 plus 0 0.025 times 10,000 minus the 600. And my calculator gave me an answer of 9650. That's my new balance. Now when I go to n equals 2, that becomes previous, previous balance. So it will go in where the 10,000 used to be. And I get a value of 92,91,25. Well, that becomes the previous balance when we do the next month. So we'll plug those in. Okay. If I were in your position, I don't know if I would be writing all these values right here. If you understand where they're coming from, you could just cut to the chase. If you don't understand where they're coming from, then by all means write it down. N equals 4 to get to the next month. Also, something important to note is it didn't come out exactly to 0.53. It had more decimal places. But since it's money, I rounded to two places. 
And so after we've made five sets of payments, we're down to owing $8,160.29. Now that's five months. We've knocked almost $2,000 off the debt, which isn't too bad. Now, one more idea is called is the idea of an iteration, an iterative function. It's a special kind of recursion where you take the answer you just got and you throw it right back in. Okay. When they talk about finding the first three iterates, what they're saying is starting from six plug six in and get the answer for that. If we plug six in, now take that answer from there, negative 10, and plug it in, and then take that answer and plug it back in. Each one of these is called an iterate or an iteration. If they wanted the fourth iterate, we would plug this in to find x number 4. If they wanted the fifth iterate, we would take that answer and plug it in to get x number 5. Okay, All you're doing is taking the value that you just got and stuff it right back through the function. It might be something nice and clean. It might be a major pain in the uh, posterior region. You know, whatever it comes out as, you just use that and go back through it again. So iterations are a lot like recursion. You have to use the answer you got to get to the next answer. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you, and we'll see you in class.